Hello, I am Cory Yoder of Coriander Quilts and I am excited to be here with you today. We are going to be talking about hand quilting. And I think one of the big things that people get hung up on when they start thinking about hand quilting, first off is the actual hand quilting part, but then secondly, they're a little bit confused about where to start with their hand quilting supplies. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you what I like to use, but then other supplies that you might consider for ways to make hand quilting work for you. Everybody is different, and just like with piecing a quilt, different quilters have different ideas about the pins they'd like to use, or the iron, do we pre-wash, those sorts of things. You're going to find that hand quilting has similar options for you as well. So that's what I'm gonna be talking with you today. But first, I wanna take a minute to tell you about how I came into hand quilting. So I grew up with generations of quilters on my mom's side of the family and on my dad's side of the family. So I have always had it um, in my blood, I guess you would say. But when I was at home, I was not interested in hand quilting at all. Um, we always had quilts in a frame at home and my, my mom would have her, her mom over and her aunts and we would have get togethers to quilt the quilts and when mom needed a quilt quilted, she would have the people over. And if my grandma needed a quilt quilted, we would go over to my grandma's house and we would hand quilt over there. So my mom had all of us, my sisters and I, um, try to hand quilt at least once or twice. My brother may have gotten out of having to try hand quilting. I'm not sure on that one. He's the baby of the family, so he might not have gotten um, the rules of having to try hand quilting, but my sisters and I certainly did. Um, but really, what I remember most about quilting was just the community that you had with your family members around and everyone was chatting and laughing, and I just have such good memories of hand quilting. And that is really what, um, hand quilting means to me now, it's that community. So I always encourage people to try it, see what you think. It's oftentimes much more intimidating in your head than it's ever going to be once you get started. So let's talk supplies. Um, the first thing we're gonna talk about are the needles. So I prefer to use an embroidery needle, a size seven embroidery needle. You'll see up here, my preference is the John James embroidery needle size seven. It has a longer shaft than what you're going to typically use for hand quilting. The type of hand quilting that I like to use, it's called big stitch quilting or long stitch or pick stitch. Any of those terms refer to this type of hand quilting. And the technique is the same as what you might consider traditional hand quilting where um, you're using the very fine stitches and smaller needles and finer thread but the techniques are entirely the same. So when you're looking for a needle, you're going to want to choose a needle that has a longer shaft that's going to accommodate the, um, the thread. The stitches are longer and it's going to accommodate those stitches. And then the eye of the needle, you want one that is um, a fatter, longer eye. So that's what you're going to be looking for with a needle. There's no wrong or right needle. You just have to find one that works well for you. One thing I do like to suggest is the Peppercory Big Stitch Quilting Needle Pack. This pack is wonderful because it has a lot of different types of needles, longer ones, shorter ones, ones with fatter eyes, um, narrower eyes, so you can really try a bunch of different ones. And you're not going to know what type of needle works well for you until you try some. So that is a great needle pack to try. And even though I use the embroidery needle, the size seven, a lot of people find that needle to be too bendy. And it does bend when I'm hand quilting. And I actually don't mind that, but some hand quilters don't prefer that. So just because something works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So, and while we're talking about needles and thread, let's just go right into thread. So I always kind of feel like if you're going to put the work into hand quilting, you want thread that you're going to be able to see because you put the work into it, let's let people enjoy what you have done. So I like to use colorful thread and I like to use a heavier weight thread. So I usually end up using a 12 weight or an eight weight thread. I use different brands. Um, the quilting that you see um, on my projects here um, and on these pillows over here are all done using primarily Aurafil 12 weight thread, which is going to be a nice, it's a heavier weight thread, but it's not so heavy that it becomes difficult to quilt with. I have a thread pack, which has all of the colors that I like using from Aurafil. It's my Sunny Stitches. Um, hand quilting thread pack. These are 12 weight threads and you can see all of the colors here. When I was picking out colors for the thread pack, I wanted things that were going to work for multiple collections. So it's just the warm, sunny colors that I like to work with. And um, this thread works wonderful for hand quilting. 
Alternatively, you could use um, like a DMC if you wanted to. Uh, I've used Finca threads. Eight weights or 12 weights are my preferred weights. The eight weight is a heavier weight. As you go lower with your number, the thread weights are thicker. So just keep that in mind as you're choosing your threads. The next thing we will talk about here are thimbles. There are a lot of different options that we can go with on thimbles. And I would highly suggest that you try using a thimble. You might find that it's not your favorite thing to do, but it is going to help with your quilting. You'll be able to quilt for longer periods of time. It's gonna save your fingers. With that being said, I don't always use a thimble, but I'm gonna tell you what you should do, even if it's not always what I do. When I use a thimble, my favorite one to use is a little clover. Um, it's a little leather thimble with just a little silver uh, pad right on your finger. And I like this one because it is a little more lightweight. I don't feel like it adds a lot of bulk. Sometimes um, thimbles can feel a little bit bulky. I know my mom and my grandma and great aunts, they always use these big silver ones and I could never get used to these, but this is still what my mom uses. So if that's something that you like using, then just go for it. There's no right or wrong thimble to use. It's just what works best for you. Um, another great option are these polka dots. These little guys are little adhesive um, pads that you can just adhese. I don't think that's quite the right word, but you can stick them right to your fingers and they will protect your fingertips without adding any bulk to your fingers. So these are polka dots. They are a great option. And there are even lots of other options. Um, there's silicone thimbles. Uh, I've even gone so far as to just bandage up whatever finger was getting beat up a little bit more just because I don't like a lot of bulk. And if I'm doing a small project, I can get away without using a thimble. So I will show you how to do that too um, because that might be you. And I don't ever think you should feel deterred from hand quilting just because you're unsure of the supplies or something doesn't feel right. You just gotta find the combination of things that works well for you. Moving on from thimbles, we will talk about marking tools. I like to mark everything before I hand quilt it. I find that that just helps keep everything nice and tidy. The marker that I prefer most often is the Mark Be Gone marker. This is a water soluble marker and it will come out once you thoroughly wet it. Now I will tell you that if you don't thoroughly wet this, um, it can come back and you could have some blue back, but after you wash it in your machine the first time, I've never had marks come by. And I am pretty vigorous with my marking and I also iron, I starch, and I've never had trouble with that marker. Um, with that being said, sometimes you don't want to put markers onto your quilt tops that you are going to um, actually be marking. And if that's you, I might suggest using the Hera marker. This is a marker that just puts a crease. You use it just like a marker. So you lay your ruler down and you mark with the Hera marker and it just puts a crease on the top of your fabric. So you're not actually putting any marks on. And that's a great option for you if you're concerned about putting any sort of, of marker or anything like that. A chalk marker, um, chalk pencil would be another option that would be great if you were concerned about putting something permanent onto your quilt top. So um, the Mark Be Gone is, is kind of my standby, but there are other options for that as well. I will tell you, I have this little guy pulled off camera, the friction marker. I highly recommend people not to use these to mark their quilt tops. Um, I love using them for half square triangles or for flying geese, places that you're not ever going to see the marks, but on a quilt top, I've heard too many stories of the marks coming back or the marks bleaching dark fabrics that I just encourage people to steer away from these just for marking quilt tops, even if you use them in other parts of quilt making. Let's talk about batting a little bit. So with hand quilting, I prefer to use a low loft batting. I find that my stitches on my quilt top uh, show up nicer. And again, if I am taking the time to hand quilt, I wanna make sure that people are going to be able to see the, the stitches. So I like a low loft batting. And I also prefer like an 80-20 cotton poly blend. Some hand quilters do prefer to use 100% cotton. Um, and you're also gonna find some that will swear by silk or swear by wool or bamboo. So there are different options. The one thing to keep in mind when you're, when you're hand quilting is with 100% cotton, occasionally you can run into clumps of um, like fibers, the cotton fibers within the batting that if you were doing a larger project could, um, I mean, it could become bothersome, but I know hand quilters, there are ones that love 100% cotton for the batting and it does give a really nice weight and um, 
the breathe so nice and the drape is really nice. So again, that's one of those things you're gonna have to find what batting you prefer. And if you've pieced quilts before, I'm sure that you have a batting that you prefer using. Um, and you might just wanna experiment with the type of batting that you have on hand and see what works well for you. When I am um, making my quilt sandwiches, I prefer to use the 505 spray based. And again, I do a lot of smaller projects when I'm hand quilting. I don't often take on large quilts to hand quilt, so I find that the 505 works very well for spray basting. Um, you can move your pieces around nicely. If you've worked with 505 before, you know how nice it is to work with. It doesn't gum up your needle at all when you're hand quilting. Um, and I just find that that's kind of my go-to. You can also safety pin based or thread based. There are different options for that as well. So it's another one of those things you're gonna experiment a little bit with. And then lastly, uh, the rulers. So when I mark quilts, I just use a ruler. Uh, I oftentimes will use uh, just a creative grid, something that fits across as much of my project as it can. Um, so you might, for pillows or minis, something like this is going to be great. If you're using something longer, you know, as long as you have in your stash, that's what I prefer to use. I just grab my longest ruler and I'll mark the lines. And typically with hand quilting, when you're using these big stitches like this, your quilting designs are going to be pretty simple. Um, you're not gonna be doing feathers, or stippling or, or anything of that nature, oftentimes, because it's not going to show up as nicely. With the bigger stitches and the bigger gaps between your stitches, you're gonna find that the simpler you keep your quilting design, the happier you're going to be with the results. And so just a long ruler is going to work great for you to mark all of your, your quilt tops with. I can't forget the cutest part of the items I have up here. So you have all of your quilting supplies and you're gonna need somewhere to store them. And I always store all of my quilting supplies in a sew together bag. It works wonderfully. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these bags. I imagine you have because they pop up all the time and every time I see one I just think it's cuter than the next. So these bags have zippers inside and they work just beautifully for tucking your scissors down in there. I can fit everything I need to hand quilt with me in this bag with the exception of like the batting and bigger items but all the little small items I just tuck down in here and if you're working on a small quilting project you um, it's very portable you can take everything along with you and it makes just such a nice way to easily transport your supplies and I even added some hand quilting on there onto my sew together bag because it's my hand quilting bag so um, that is a must-have this is the sew together bag pattern by sew demented and it's a great pattern and one I really recommend if you need something cute to tuck your quilting supplies down in so in our next segment we are going to be talking about a pillow I'm going to show you guys how to piece a simple pillow project and then we will actually be talking about the quilting stitches and you know, how do we go about hand quilting? And I think you're gonna find out that it will be easy and fun, and I hope you will join along. So I will see you soon.